Hello, how are you today? I'm coming back to you with part two of the power of your imagination. That's right, your imagination has power and we're going to rehearse again the definition of this gentleman, Napoleon Hill, about the imagination. The imagination is the workshop of the soul. We're in our shape or plans for individual achievement. Man's greatest gift is his mind. It analyzes, compares, chooses. The mind also creates, visualizes, foresees, and generates ideas. The imagination is your mind's exercise. It challenges and is the mirror of your soul. So it challenges, it foresees, it can perceive, it analyzes and compares. Now the eagle is a very interesting bird. All birds have what they call a bird's eye view. They can see in front, on the side, and back, and in back of them. That's why if you ever try to sneak up on a bird, it's very hard to catch. He not only can hear you very well, he can see you when you think you're not looking at him or her. Now, the eagle is a very symbolic bird. It's symbolic because it has strength. It's a very wise and masterful and aggressive hunter. They're very strong. The talons are very strong, too. If you notice, people that are holding an eagle or even a hawk in the eagle family, they actually have a glove or something on their arm or their hand to protect not only their skin, but their bones. So another thing about the eagle, according to the Hebrew culture, the eagle is a foreseer, a wise and perceptive and prophetic symbol of the mind. Like Napoleon Hill, it analyzes, visualizes, and foresees. So let's take a look at someone else in this book, Think and Grow Rich by Dennis Kimbrough, A Black Choice, that use their imagination from start to finish and see what happened. We're gonna be talking about Madam C.J. Walker. She engraved her name on the tablets of time by cultivating her imagination. She utilized it, she took action. In digital marketing, we call it a call to action or doing something. At a time when the average black believer, or believed rather, he was either too young or too old or ill-prepared to move beyond self-imposed limits. Madam Walker dreamed big dreams. She was born in 1967 on a Louisiana farm in the vice of poverty. Not only was she impoverished, she was also an orphan. So that's two strikes against her. And let's see what happened. Sarah Breadlove, as she was then called, barely eked out an existence. So she was really struggling. Many days, there simply wasn't enough to eat. And you know what it is to be hungry. I know what it is to be hungry. It's not a comfortable feeling. Many days, she went through heavy challenges. Now, she did search for broader opportunities. So here she is already thinking, impoverished, going through this situation, negativity, and thinking already in her mind, there's got to be a better way, okay? She left her family's farm for life in the Mississippi Delta, excuse me, Mississippi Delta. So what did she do? She did not stay where she was. She decided to move out of that area. When you seek new opportunities, the power of your imagination, you're willing to take a risk. It's something about people in business. Sarah settled into her new surroundings, working wherever she could. So she, as they say, do what you got to do. All right. As a domestic and a washerwoman, she trudged countless miles through towns and back roads. And you know anything about Mississippi back then, and some places even now, a black person, uh, you know, in certain areas, it's just you have to be careful. She was lugging her laundry basket while she dreamed of better days. I want to focus on that word 
dreamed. Here she is in a negative situation, moved away from her family so that she can get more clarity. And in the midst of her wilderness journey, she's dreaming over and over and over or thinking over and over and over or imagining over and over and over, seeing herself in her mind first in a better situation. Neither lack of money nor influential friends would deter her from a date with destiny. So destiny was calling her. Why? Because what she possessed was far more powerful than either an unlimited an imagination. So the vision, the perception, the ego vision, ego eye that she was using, let her know, keep going, keep going, be diligent. Be patient, keep doing what you're doing, and better things are on the way. Like so many who have looked for success and found it, Sarah searched with her mind's eye, just said her mind. She gazed at her world in its outward appearance of deprivation, hungry, and misery with fresh eyes, a new look, a new perspective. Through her imagination, she saw opportunities all about her. She saw it where first? In the physical? No. She saw it in the spirit realm. A lot of you don't understand spirit or your imagination is more real than wood, what you can hear, taste, see, smell, or feel. It's much more real because everything starts in the spirit realm, the unseen. Imagine the computer that you're watching me on and listening to me right now was first a thought because of the power of someone's imagination. Let that sink in. And then they took that idea that they had from here first and wrote the words down. Then they developed the plan, gathered resources and people and started to manufacture the what? The computer with all of its wonderful uses. Back to Madam C.J. Walker. So her imagination saw opportunities all about her. Her job as a domestic under a wealthy aristocratic family exposed her to the social graces of the upper class. Now notice, from being hungry to leaving her family, to move into the Mississippi Delta, now working for a, what you would call high society, white family as a house worker, she saw a different side of life in the natural, but first she had to see it in her imagination. As Sarah went about her daily chores, she was particularly mindful of the appearance and grooming habits of the well-to-do. She believed that all hair textures and skin tones were naturally beautiful, and they are, because God made us that way. But she also believed that natural beauty needed enhancement, improvement, to realize its full potential. She wanted to develop a product for the texture of Black Americans, of their hair, the texture of their hair. That's what she's known for. What if someone could create a hair care system that could straighten and soften coarse hair. She thought in her mind, now filled with a purpose, she sensed an opportunity. So Sarah, or Madam C.J. Walker, used her imagination to see herself out of a negative situation into a better situation found a need and decided to fill it. Isn't that what we do in digital marketing and in all businesses, supply and demand? What are the pain points of the customer? Addressing those pain points, building content and strategies, and then taking action to deal with those pain points and alleviate the challenges the problems that the people have. Now listen, 
with a newfound goal and definite purpose, or I'm going to back up and say a defined, sharp, fine-tuned purpose, she worked hard and earnestly. Diligence is important. Every waking moment outside of her duties as a domestic, she spent concocting hair formulas and methods that would carry out her objective. I just mentioned how you imagine and then write things down and then take action. The people that built the computer or the phone or anything, it's all the same principles. Imagine, write it down, speak, and act. Or you can imagine, speak, write the vision down, the plans down, and then act on those plans, step by step, piece by piece. The power of the imagination fuels the vision, fuels your goals, fuels your dreams, get them fulfilled. She pushed forth because of her desire. She continued to toil into the early morning hours until an idea finally struck. You often hear about people coming through with scientific and technical breakthroughs. They spend hours upon hours upon hours focusing, laser-like focus on the same thing. I can hear my wife in the past Michael, you're always on that computer, 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 computer. Take a break, take a break. And I tell her, I can't rest. I can relax a little, but not rest until certain things are accomplished. Why? Because I have to be diligent. And all that came from watching my father and mother when I was younger and then getting involved with the martial arts at the age of 14. And I've been doing it over 40 years. The diligence, the patience, the failing, the getting up, the trying it again. Keep at it, keep at it, seven days a week, eight hours a day to the point where I would catch Charlie horses in both my legs and couldn't even sleep, had to walk to the bathroom, punching both of my legs, punching them, bang, 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 punching and punching and punching because of the diligence and the vision within me to get better. Same thing with Madam C.J. Walker. She used the same principles. So she manufactured something special for pressing hair. She contacted and commissioned a metal worker to build it. So now we see the collaboration and the teamwork, which is vitally, vitally excuse me, important in any type of business or goal or objective. Could be, a, could be sports. So what happened? Combining her walker comb and a special hair preparation that will not only strengthen coarse hair, but gave dull, dry looking here, a soft and natural texture, a feel. So now it's going from here into the material realm. It's materializing. In 1905, Madam Walker, as she was known, improved upon her original idea and developed a complete line of hair and beauty aids, which she initially sold door to door transforming himself, herself from someone doing laundry to a hair care tycoon. Listen, not only did she do one product, out of one came many. George Washington Carver did over 200 things from the peanut. And people say, how did he get that? He prayed and asked God for wisdom and God told him. He wanted all of God's wisdom. God said, little man, your brain and mine is too small to hold all of my wisdom, but this is what I'll do. I'll give you the secret of the peanut. And a lot of people, when they teach history, especially black history, they don't mention that part. A lot of people don't even know, but that's how we got it. And people from all around the surrounding farms, white farmers especially, came to see that 10-year-old little boy to get insight and strategies how to better their crops. Why? They had to eat, they had to sell it, and they had to make money to live. Farming is a business and a science. For millions of women, both black and white, hair products were the answer to their prayers. Almost overnight, she found herself in business with assistants, agents, schools, and eventually a manufacturing company. Powerful, the power of your imagination. Before her death in 1919, Madam Walker could count more than 2,000 agents marketing an ever-expanding line of products. Notice it's growing. 
bringing up sales that made her America's first black female millionaire. That's what I wanted to get to. The power of her imagination led her from poverty to becoming the first black female millionaire. And back then in those days, it was a real big deal because whites and blacks were going through poverty. A lot of white people couldn't read. A lot of black people couldn't even read. So that limited them from getting resources and opening up new doors of opportunity for themselves, their family, and for others. So this woman, Madam C.J. Walker, if she would have never used the power of her imagination, she wouldn't have gotten from point A to Z. We know it today as creativity. Creativity will always be one of the greatest soft skills in demand. People want to work with, hire, collaborate with people and companies that are creative. Not only do they think outside the box, some creative people like some of you that I'm talking to don't even have a box anymore because you've burned it to ashes and it no longer exists. You are using the power of your imagination and you're inspiring and educating others to do so. What I'm doing is you do have an imagination. I'm encouraging you. I'm inspiring you and empowering you that whatever you're struggling with, take some quiet time. And I'm going to add this. Things like listening to classical music, soft nature sounds, smooth jazz, smooth R&B, or even some soft country, bluegrass country, what it does, it settles the nerves to where now you can relax and hear the still voice of your imagination. Your imagination has a voice. The human makeup is so unique, designed by God. Hallelujah, Jesus. I got to say that. The imagination is so powerful, a young man can say, one day I'm going to be the most famous basketball players in the world. And here comes Michael Jordan. And before Michael Jordan, out of Philadelphia, came Dr. J, which a lot of the guys in the pros mimic what he's done. Dr. J was the man. Or let's talk about boxing, Kentucky. Out of that came Muhammad Ali. Out of New York, Brooklyn, BK, came Mike Tyson. Out of Detroit came Floyd Mayweather. I don't care what people say about Floyd. Floyd is all right with me and he's all right with God because number one, he quit school to support his mom. He used his talent and his skills and he's a better businessman than he is a boxer. He has this young brother around him. He's a rapper. He's helped him. He has Leonard Ellerbury, who has a master's degree in business. He talks to billionaires and other people to give him ideas. He's opening up not only boxing gyms, but fitness gyms. He has dental products on the market. Through the imagination, he had an interview one time and the guy was saying, what's wrong? He said, I'm always thinking, I'm thinking, I'm always thinking. That's his imagination. Remember, the gentleman of the book says, your imagination is your soul or your mind's exercise. It has to work. So allow your imagination to work. Take a walk. When the kids or the wife or the husband or the job gets on your nerves, take a walk, settle down. Drink some orange juice, some water, some milk, some Gatorade. Settle down and relax. Get quiet. You can have no sound or you can use nature sounds or you can use soft R&B, soft jazz. Classical music is powerful. There's a gentleman by the name of Jacob Armin. When he was about 
three months old, I believe it was, his father was involved with jazz, put a jazz cassette tape by his crib. Uh, now, at six months old, three months later, he was clapping in perfect timing. That young man is one of the greatest drummers in the world. His father plays the keyboards, and electric accordion. You'll see him, Google him on YouTube, at eight years old, at nine years old, and later on in his 30s, Jacob Armin, A-R-M, I believe it's E-E-N, or A-R-M-E-N, and put that in, and you'll see him on Johnny Carson, and this young man, at the age of eight and nine, is playing a double bass. That means your hand, feet, and eye coordination has to be on target, and he's playing, I mean, like nobody's business. Why? He used his imagination. Christian Sands from New Haven, piano player, awesome, started playing at three, composing at five. Imagination. I seen him at 10 on Park Street in New Haven, Connecticut, five minutes away from Yale. The young boy was chewing gum, and I mean, those keys, you had to call the fire department. Those keys was his fingers and keys was on fire. And he's still awesome. He's getting better. He, he actually went back to school. And at the age of 14, he had the opportunity to teach kids, younger kids, up in Madison. Goes to the church in St. Matthews on Dixwell Avenue, New Haven. The power of the imagination. Willie the Bam Johnson. Locked up in jail. Ex-gang member. Now he's a husband, a father. Keynote speaker, martial artist. He was on television years ago, but now he is using his imagination to empower the youth through a program called Point MMA, giving youth structure, giving them ethics, values beyond the kick and the punch, building character, helping them to use the power of their imagination so that they're an asset to society and not a liability. So I'm encouraging you to be inspired, be educated, and be empowered to use your imagination and don't let anything can find you. Don't let toxic people pull you down, pull away from them, cut them off. Don't let toxic phone calls hinder you, cut them off. Groups and societies that are toxic, that want your time and attention, cut them off because your imagination is connected to your destiny and your destiny is calling you to a greater place than where you are so that you can leave a legacy now and later and educate and inspire and empower others to take action. That's the power of the imagination. Mine, yours, his, hers, theirs. Take care. God bless you.